What I want to talk to you about today is something that's very, very personal to me. It's the experience of living with a communication disorder. In my case, stuttering. I'll be talking about some tidbits that are helpful and some things that you probably don't want to do if you talk to people with communication disorders. However, starting off, I want to set the stage and offer a portrayal that we're going to need to go back in time to explore. Back more years than I'd like to say, back to my high school days. While I was in high school, growing up in Western Pennsylvania, we spent a lot of time on a friend's arms. So the transition out to Idaho was a pretty easy transition. One time, coming home from a friend's farm, a friend of mine was driving his car on a gravel road, driving way too fast, ended up losing control of the car. The car rolled and rolled and rolled and rolled four times, ending up on its hood, pushed up against a telephone pole. My friend had a cut across the top of his head, bleeding a lot. Had to take off my shirt, wrap his head to stop the bleeding. Fortunately, we did have cell phones. Took out my cell phone, just kind of a Zach Morris style cell phone at the time. <laughs> Called 911. The 911 operator hung up on me. I called back. She hung up on me again. I had to try to get my friend to be aware enough to tell the operator that I stuttered. A 911 operator finally let me speak after someone else told her that I stuttered. I didn't know if my friend was going to survive, how much he was bleeding, what was going on. In that state, I was trapped. So I'm not only going to be talking about the, the, those aspects. I'm going to be talking about what you can do as listeners to support those of us with communication disorders also. In being a speech language pathologist, an academic faculty member who studies in this area, and a person who stutters, I have the opportunity to be an, an educator, an advocate, and I want to impart some of that experience in helping you all increase your understanding for people with communication disorders. And through some experiences that I'm going to ask you to have, hopefully gain some empathy too. Starting off, it helps to talk about what stuttering is. So when we talk about stuttering, we conceptualize it in this iceberg. 10% of the iceberg is what's above the surface of the water, which is what we can see. In stuttering, it might be r r r repetitions, pr prolongations, or bl blocks, where we just get stuck on what we're trying to say. We might even get stuck to the extent that we have to force it out, or try to force it out pushing our arms out, smacking our hands against our legs, something else to try to get us out of being frozen. So stuttering is an intermittent involuntary neural motor disorder. A lot of words there. What it essentially means is we know what we're trying to say. We know how we're trying to say it. We just get stuck in that moment trying to actually produce what we're trying to say. So those observable features, those overt characteristics, are what we think of with the top of the iceberg. However, as you can tell, there's 90% of the iceberg below the surface of the water, submerged, that we can't see, that we don't often talk about. That's the shame, the guilt, the feeling that we're inferior, how we think about ourselves, how we feel about ourselves, how we choose to interact 
with our social world. And because this talk is about the experience of living with a communication disorder, I'm going to ask you you all to do something a little bit uncomfortable and maybe kind of scary. I'm going to ask you to stutter. Now, in having you stutter, I need to be honest. I haven't been showing my true stuttering. I've been trying to control how I've been talking. I've been using techniques and strategies, forms of fake stuttering, holding sounds out, gently gliding into words I'm saying, using forms of altered stuttering to reduce my stuttering severity. If I do not use any techniques or strategies, and what I'm going to show you is very representative of how I still sound, if I don't use any techniques at all, I sound like that. And I stutter on most every word in a sentence. So that's very hard what I'm going to ask you to do. I want you to experience the essence of a communication disorder in this example, stuttering. So you might be thinking, well, wait, I'm a kind person. I live my life with my heart. We've heard a lot of talks about living our lives for others. When we have friends, spouses, children, parents, friends, clinicians, teachers, put themselves out there and experience this vulnerable state of stuttering, clients who stutter report it increases the relationship. It strengthens the relationship. They're no longer isolated. They feel supported and understood. So for the purpose of this activity, it's okay. I give you permission to stutter and do a great job stuttering too. Have as many secondary stuttering behaviors as you want. Uh, Really toss yourselves in there. However, if you meet someone or the next time you meet someone with a communication disorder, probably not a good idea to just switch back to your stuttering state. So I want you to turn to the people around you. Introduce yourselves. Tell them what you've gained from this TEDx experience so far with some great stuttering. And after that, I'm going to ask you to just shout out some things that you experienced just then in that moment. So take about 30 seconds, turn to the people around you and stutter. Okay, so I'm hearing some great talking, chatting, stuttering. I I did hear some stuttering, especially over here. Great job. (laughs) What did you experience just then? Awkward. It's hard. Hesitation of frustration. Yes, completely. Anyone else? Uncomfortable. I heard... Time, embarrassment, shyness, fears. We get a magnification that everyone around us is judging us, thinking us, thinking about us in a negative way, evaluating us. That sense of time stops. You're frozen in that moment. You feel like this is taking forever. I, I can just switch back. I can start talking. Why am I doing this? That self-judgment, that anxiety, that frustration. People who stutter often describe feeling less than human. Less than human because of that self-judgment. Less than human because of what we perceive 
others are evaluating us as. Less than human because the reactions we receive. Having people laugh, mock, make fun of us. Ask us if we know our name. I do promise you, I know my name. The moment of stuttering is often described as the feeling of drowning. You can't touch the bottom, can't get your head above water. You're trying to gasp to survive for one second longer. Now, imagine someone on the side of the pool offering advice to that individual. Take your time. Breathe. It's easy. Put one arm in front of the other. You, you know how to swim. This is what it comes across for people who stutter. Not the value of what we're saying, but a focus on how we're saying it. So we should shift. Focus more on the content, less on the delivery. You're probably also thinking, wait, some stuff's just not adding up here. You're sounding kind of in control of your stuttering. It's sounding like you're a confident speaker. Where's, and you presented us this very overt, severe stuttering. Why is this not adding up? As individuals who stutter, we go through a process of self-discovery through clinicians. So clinicians are not going to cure people who stutter. 8 to 12% of the world's population will go through some stage of stuttering, typically early developmental, before around the age of five. Of that 8 to 12 percent, 80 percent will spontaneously recover within a year, of, a year and a half of onset of stuttering. So they'll no longer stutter, regardless of type of therapy, if they've went to therapy or if they haven't went to therapy. However, those of us who continue to stutter and have chronic communication disorders throughout the lifetime, our job as clinicians is not to cure them. It's to help them become more open and accepting of who we are as individuals and about our communication disorder. We want people to be more confident speak how they want, when they want, to who they want, while still effectively managing their stuttering. So we don't cure people. We offer them the opportunity to set the stage for how they communicate through things like fake stuttering. All of our strategies and techniques to be more in control of our stuttering are altered forms of stuttering. I know, kind of ironic, isn't it? We also can have people use disclosure, disclosure statements. Say, hi, my name is Dan, and I stutter. If you ever need me to re repeat anything, just let me know. Or, ha, 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 hi, my, my, my name is Dan. It's great to meet you. By approaching communication confidently, openly, and stuttering, we set the stage for how we expect people to respond to us. If I don't show I'm ashamed of my stuttering, if I don't show that I feel guilt for my stuttering, I'm not embarrassed by it, why should you be as the listener? So th this comes with a cost, though. When I use techniques, when I s use strategies, it feels like I'm uh, putting on an act. I'm not portraying my true self to you. Imagine going through life, planning what you're going to say and how you're going to say it in all aspects of your life. It comes with pros and cons. It's a dichotomy. It may increase confidence as well as decrease confidence. 
It may increase self-worth. It may decrease self-worth. It may decrease anxiety. It may set unrealistic expectations, therefore increasing anxiety. The amount of energy and cognitive effort it takes to enact some of these things on a daily basis is very representative to asking all of you to not use a word with a letter S in it from now until 20 years from now. Imagine how much energy that would take, constantly planning, changing, revising, not saying what you want to say, becoming socially recluse, impacted, changing how you think about yourself, how you feel about yourself. So the next time you talk to someone with a communication disorder, let's have some patience. Be there with the individual. Be present with them through their struggle. Maintain eye contact, a relaxed posture. Give them the time that they need. It might have taken them a lot of courage to come up and talk to you. So it's a very meaningful conversation, or it could be, if we give them the time. We all love to play charades. Who doesn't like to try to figure out through gestures what someone else is saying, especially if it's just on the spot, random? However, I would ask, please, please, let us finish our sentences.